This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm 21 years old, and I live in New York City. I love the, the underbelly. I love the, you know, underground scene, the, you know, the chaos. I wish I could get this whole thing. Steal this whole sign. I haven't been doing a lot artistically lately because I've been interested in other things. <laughs> I never thought, looking at her as a beautiful little baby, that I would ever see this day. I am a street junkie. The drug scene here is so prevalent that you can't walk down the block without somebody offering you something. So you can get heroin here a little easier than you can get pot. But for me, it's good because I am I'm a part of that subculture. Heroin is the most important thing to Rachel. Her whole life revolves around it. Heroin has changed her into a thief, into a liar. Like, heroin will always be my, my favorite, like, love. But I can't really do dope right now because I'm a method. It's not even worth it. It keeps you from getting high. I end up shooting coke. Rachel panhandles on the street and just asks people for money. She doesn't have a job. She can't get a job. She doesn't want a job. 99.9% .9 of everything she says is a lie. Thank you, sir. I think Rachel has lost her dignity. Living on the streets in New York isn't the safest place. She's got to deal with people the bad people. She's got to deal with sleeping on subways. And I'm sure she's got to worry about, obviously, getting mugged, getting raped. She overdosed. She died on the table, and they brought her back. Every day that she's on the street is another nail in her coffin. Rachel was born in Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, she was my first child, and she was just so beautiful. It was the happiest day of my life. She was pretty big, nine pounds, 13 ounces. And she was very sweet, just like the perfect little child. Everybody was ecstatic. It was the first infant in, in the family. After Carol gave birth to Rachel, uh, her weight ballooned. Like most women, they, they put on some weight. And I do remember it was somewhat of an issue back then. I did everything that I could, but it got to a point where I was offended that he was putting this much pressure on me to lose weight. After I um, separated from my husband, she was always drawing, always making something. Rachel is extremely talented when it comes to art. I um, always was a dreamer. I always wanted to be, you know, an actress or a singer or a rock star. She never had any lessons or anything, but she definitely had an aptitude towards being artistic. My childhood was always fun, but I felt lonely as a kid because my mom worked a lot. My dad wasn't there. Ralph was very into himself. He wasn't a person that you could easily get close to. His idea of bonding time was sitting together, looking at muscle magazines, and picking out who the hottest girl, you know, with the hottest body was. Ralph made Rachel feel overweight, and Rachel resented Ralph for that. Image is the most important thing to my father. 
I started purging because I was like, wow, I can get skinny fast. Okay, cool, that's cool. Her grades started to fail. She was losing weight. She always looked very pale to me. So I started to suspect that she was using drugs. When I found out that if you did a lot of drugs, that keeps you skinny, I, uh, I was like, well, I like that. I like that idea. It is the drug that changed my life. Heroin made the sun rise in my soul. She glorifies drug use. She thinks that it's cool to be heroin chic. Child Protective Services told me that if I didn't remove Rachel from the house, that she would look to take my son, Sean, away from me. And I couldn't have that. I got to give a lot of credit for my being able to survive to Joey. Um, he did take care of me. I didn't want my daughter with this kind of a guy. I knew that he had been in jail. He manipulated her. He screamed at her. He verbally abused her. He didn't want to let her out of his sight. She finally said to me, Joey's my boyfriend, and there's nothing you can do about it. I love Joey. He's a great guy. She had everything, and she walked away from it because of her drug use and because of Joey. I don't see how it could get any worse for her than it is right now. I believe deep down inside when it comes to Rachel's getting healthy, Joey hanging over her, telling her what to do is a stumbling block for us. I tried everything that I could to help her, to get her help, but she doesn't want my help. The main reason for that has been Joey. He's abusive. I worry all the time that he's gonna hurt her. In my eyes, it's just a matter of time before I lose my daughter. Good night, Joey. Just listen. You ruined my life. Don't you get Give it? Give me a chance to talk to you about it. <laughs> Give me a chance. Give me a chance to apologize. <laughs> Please. Whatever. Fine. 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 Don't you look what you're doing to yourself again? You've been lying to me. You've been telling me that you're clean. I haven't been doing dope. Okay, so, why so do you you're care? shooting cocaine. What's the in hole in your neck? Gives a. F I give a. F Everyone in this room is here for you. I'm here because I love you. I know you pushed me out of your life. I know you hate me. But you know what? I still love you. You're my daughter. I'll always love you. And I will never give up on you. I'm going to go, but I have, it's on my terms. If you're saying yes, I'm Can I hug thrilled. You, please? <laughs> Rachel, Rachel, it's going to be fine. I don't want to go back to the old person that I was. I'm definitely really hopeful about where things are going to go and what the future is going to bring.
I'm nine days sober today. Nine.